joining me on a journey deep, and I mean deep, into the Australian outback on Wadjuri country. Now this might sound a little bit far-fetched, but we are heading to see a time machine. Our destination's in an arid, ancient part of the country, a designated radio quiet zone. If you take enough right turns, eventually something otherworldly appears on the horizon. Whoa. Look at that dish dance. Spread over 3,400 square kilometres, this is the CSIRO Murchison Radio Astronomy Observatory in Yarimana, Ilguri, Bundura. In Yarimana, Ilguri, Bundura is actually Wadjuri language for sharing the sky and stars. So for us, it's been a, a really important demonstration and beautiful opportunity to share our relationship and Wadjuri language with the world. The observatory is already home to two world-class telescopes. The most conspicuous is called ASCAP, a radio telescope with 36 dishes operating as one. It's a one-off, it's a world first in what it actually does. Are you able to try to explain to me in simple terms what a radio telescope does, how it works? It's not something that you look through. It's using radio waves that's coming from objects like black holes or um, just gases in space are, are emitting radio waves. And we're collecting those radio waves and then processing that information to uh, produce contour maps that scientists will study and try and understand the universe we've discovered a million new galaxies. The other telescope currently operating here is the Murchison Wide Field Array, composed of 4,000 spider-like antennas. They're looking at things that are millions to billions of light years away. We're seeing all of cosmic history condensed into a single snapshot, which we can then unpick and work out the history of the universe. With this telescope, astronomer Natasha Hurley-Walker observed the remnants of a supernova explosion that took place thousands of years ago. I just think it's so wonderful to have that connection uh, with people who were living here and doing astronomy 9,000 years ago. The people Natasha's referring to are the Wadjuri Yamaji, among the world's oldest astronomers and the traditional landowners and native title holders for as far as the eye can see. If you think this is incredible, wait until that sun dips beneath the horizon. That's when this place comes alive and you get a true sense of why they chose this particular place to observe deep space. Finally, I get a glimpse of the time machine I really came here to see. A massive radio telescope called SKA Low revealed at sunrise. What we're hoping to do with this telescope is to map the universe, to help us understand the birth and death of those first stars and galaxies and how the universe evolved. This telescope will complement another in South Africa's Karoo region, 197 dish antennas called SKA Mid. If there is intelligent life in a different star system near us, for the very first time we would be able to answer that kind of question, you know, are we alone in the universe? One of the biggest questions that humanity's ever posed. Before they can answer those big questions, they must first build the telescope. 131,072 Christmas tree-shaped antennas will map the sky, constructed mostly by a Wadjuri workforce. We've completed about five stations worth, which have 256 on each station. Just being out on country, working with family and friends, yeah, it's pretty cool and chill. Only 130,000 to go. Now also on the to-do list is another monumental task and that's supplying power to and transferring data from all of these antennas. And to do that, they've got about 1,000 kilometres of this cable, lots of it running underground. And that's a huge number, equivalent to around one million steps. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, 
A bank of supercomputers on and off site will help process the data. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. This is what the core looks like now. Vast red earth with mesh laid ready for the antennas. Before all this began, years of negotiations and land surveys took place to ensure the telescope wouldn't encroach on any cultural landmarks. The connecting back to land is one of the things that is great, but doing the heritage surveys and doing all the heritage protecting out there it's one of the boss things going, hey. It's the best partnership we've got. For Lockie Ronan, working on countries opened his eyes to future job opportunities and his ancestral past. My um, grandparents are uh, growing up out here. Grandfather was born on um, Woolene Station. So, yeah, there's um, cultural imprints out here with um, my ancestors. While filming with Lockie, he found out one of the dishes nearby was actually named after his grandfather, who was a prominent member of the community. We tagged along as he saw it for the first time. Yeah, it's nicknamed, yeah. It's awesome. It's something I can't really explain, but it's filled my heart some sort of way. In the glow of the campfire, the link between past and present becomes clear. Lockie under the same stars his ancestors observed thousands of years ago. How involved my uh, grandfather was in the community makes me want to um, push younger um, Indigenous kids to come out, reconnect with culture and hopefully um, experience the same feelings I get to feel today. Yeah, beyond stoked, you know, it's such a beautiful feeling, it's hard to even put into words. I'm excited to see where it goes from here.